Hey guys, Justin here with Just Tech. Today, I'll be giving you my review of the Nexus 6B. This phone's been out for a few months now, and I've been using it as my daily driver for about the past seven days. I'll just skip right to it and say, this phone is fantastic. It's sleek, it's sturdy, and I think it appeals to somebody who fits into one or all of the three following criteria. An Android fan looking for a pure Google experience you can only get from a Nexus device. Anyone looking for a phone that is cheaper than most all other flagships out there, but just as powerful. Anyone looking for a phone that will deliver a premium hardware experience along with a fun and easy software experience. Now, I'll be breaking this review into five separate parts. First, I'll start with the design and the build, then the software, then the camera, and then the battery. And finally, I'll do a wrap up. So, let's get started. When I first saw a photo of the 6P, I will tell you I wasn't a fan. The front was nondescript and the back of the device looked like Rick Moranis and Spaceballs, you know, dark helmet. I will admit though, once I had it in the hand, it began to grow on me, especially in the graphite or black model. It blends seamlessly and gives it a very futuristic vibe. On the front of the device, you're looking at a very large 5.7 inch Quad HD Super AMOLED display with a pixel density of 518 ppi. What this means in plain English, it's a fantastic display. Colors are bright, vibrant, saturated to just the right degree, and overall it's just a great, great display. The one display I believe is better than the one on the Nexus 6P is the one on the Samsung Galaxy Note 5, but only marginally so. The Note 5 has the best display of any mobile device this year, so to come in at a very, very close second is still a stellar accomplishment. You also have your various sensors and your 8 megapixel front facing camera. Flanking the display are two dual front facing speakers. If you've never been in the presence of front facing speakers, you're in for a treat. They sound crisp and clear and really make gaming and video watching an enjoyable and immersive experience. While HTC still owns loudness with their boom sound speakers, I think these speakers are still leaps and bounds better than what most other flagship devices out there with side or bottom facing mono speakers can accomplish. Going around the side of the phone, you have on the right side your textured power button and volume rocker. On the bottom, you have your USB Type-C port. Now, one thing to note is that this phone does not ship with an adapter to convert USB Type-C to Type-A or B. This means you will have to use the cable that this phone comes with or go out and purchase some more if you don't have any on hand. On the left side, you have your SIM card tray and on the top, your headphone jack. Around back, your dark helmet visor housing your 12.3 megapixel camera, which takes amazing photos and 4K video using both an f2.0 aperture and laser assisted autofocus, but no optical image stabilization. Some will say this is a pretty big deal, but with the photos I've taken, I think it'll be just fine. Of course, I'll get more into that when I get to the camera section. And then you have the Nexus imprint. This is Google's take on the fingerprint reader, and I have to say I'm quite impressed with it. While its position on the back of the device is nowhere near as convenient as Touch ID is on the iPhone, it works almost as quickly. Being able to reach into my pocket and place my index finger on the Nexus imprint and have it unlocked before I get the phone in front of me is a great feature. I wish I could do this with the iPhone instead of having to actually physically press the button to turn the device on. Nexus imprint also works with Android Pay, giving you a secure way to pay for things at contactless terminals that accept it. Plus, just having basic security. I never used a passcode for my phone before Touch ID on the iPhone, so having it on the Nexus 6P is sort of a must-have for me. When I switch over to another device that lacks a fingerprint reader, such as the OnePlus X, I still don't activate a passcode, so I'd really prefer more Android manufacturers implement one to make their device more secure. Housing the entire device is anodized aluminum that comes in three colors. Here you have the graphite model, but it also comes in white, called frost, and silver, called simply aluminum. The aluminum casing is certainly not going to win any awards in the grip department, but due to the chamfered edges offered by the sides, you won't find it all that difficult to get a somewhat firm handle on device even when using one hand. As for the weight, you're looking at 178 grams, which is slightly more than the iPhone 6S, which weighs in at 153 grams, but it gives the device enough heft to feel premium without feeling too heavy. I had no problems holding this phone for long periods of time, watching videos, or reading the news. Lastly, I'll just go over the specs here real quick because while important to some degree, they're not the end-all be-all of a device's capabilities. Aside from the very large 3450 milliamp hour battery, you're looking at an octa-core 64-bit Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 processor, Adreno 430 GPU, 3GB of DDR4 RAM, NFC, and 3 storage configurations. 32GB, 64GB, and 128GB. Overall, you're looking at a very premium, very well-crafted device that will make you feel confident in your purchase. It's slim enough to fit easily into a pocket, and after using the gargantuan Nexus 6, it's a welcome change in just about every dimension. I'm very impressed with the build quality of this device, and I think you will be too. As with all new Nexus devices, the 6P and its smaller brother, the 5X, are here to usher in Google's latest version of Android, which is 6.0 Marshmallow. Refinement is the name of the game here. The build itself is the most solid and smooth version of Android I've ever used. I've long been spoiled by iOS, and while the fluidity still has some small deficiencies, 
it truly is the best ever. I've always been disappointed by reviewers and other people saying that this version is smooth or very fluid, but I never felt it was actually the case until now. Applications open without a hitch and multitasking is finally a feature that I use on a daily basis. Now, full disclosure, I do use a custom launcher on this device, which is Nova Launcher, but that's not for a lack of confidence in the Google Now Launcher, which is the default for this device. Simply put, I want more customization. Having come from an Apple background, I prefer uniformity in my app icons and Nova Launcher gives me this. However, for the sake of this review, I was inclined to test the Google Now Launcher and I'm pleased to report that it functions smoothly. The vertical scrolling app drawer isn't exactly my cup of tea, but I suppose this is maybe just a matter of preference or muscle memory taking over. Speaking of Google Now, Marshmallow brought along a new software feature called Google Now on Tap. This is Google's way of trying to integrate Google Now into more and more facets of your life. While in previous versions of Android, you would hold the home button and then slide up to access your Google Now cards, doing this in Marshmallow on the Nexus 6P activates Google Now on Tap. This feature allows Google Now to scan the contents of any screen you're on, whether it's a text message, web page, email, or app. It's looking for things like meeting dates or contacts to add to your calendar. It can also pull up restaurant or movie details, showing you Yelp reviews or linking you to the right actor or actress's IMDB page. While it works great, albeit with a slight delay, I find myself torn between whether or not Now on Tap, and there's got to be a better name for that, right? It's something that's truly useful or a gimmick. I have yet to actually use it on a regular basis and I can't quite tell whether it's because I don't need it or I forget that it's there. Since this device has been released, Google has pushed out an incremental update to 6.0.1. And while some people have reported battery drain issues and other quirks, I've not seen any of those with my device. Being a Nexus device, you're going to have priority for software updates as they come out. I feel this device will truly be the front of the line. Now for the camera, because hands down, this is the best Nexus camera ever. As much as I loved my Nexus 5 and Nexus 6, I just couldn't get fully behind their cameras. Photos were either washed out or inconsistent, blurry or just really underperforming. I'm happy to say that Google seems to have finally gotten the message with the Nexus 6P and the 5X, both of which share the same camera. Photos come out incredibly detailed and crisp. Most of all, I'm just happy to know that I can pull out my phone, snap a quick pic, and be almost certain that I got the shot. Not something I've been able to say with other Nexus devices, and one of the reasons I kept going back to my iPhone. As I mentioned earlier, you're looking at a 12.3 megapixel rear camera and an 8 megapixel front facing camera. On the rear, being able to shoot in full 4K further enhances the future proof mantra in this phone, and the front 8 megapixel camera will ensure maximum selfie enjoyment. While I'm not a selfie taker by any means, I begrudgingly had to put that to the test just for you, so please enjoy the fruits of my suffering. As you can see though, this camera just takes some really great, amazing shots. Now for the battery. The battery on the Nexus 6P is great, probably the best of any Android phone I've used. I do believe that Doze, as I previously mentioned, is the highlight of the show here, with the very large 3450mAh battery playing a close second fiddle. I can constantly get through a whole day of use without any fear of it running low. And, even if I do, knowing that I have fast charging available is a great comfort. And this is one of the few features I'd love to see implemented into the iPhone. I'm sure some of you saw my Apple Smart Battery Case review, and design decisions aside, I'm just wishing that if you're not going to put in a bigger battery, at least let me charge it quickly. However, one notable omission here is wireless charging, and this has been explained as a necessary omission due to the metal build. I still firmly believe that wireless charging, while cool and convenient, is a solution to a problem that isn't that much of a problem. I've been wanting wireless charging to catch up in so many ways. Being able to place my phone down on a pad in the coffee shop seems like a wonderfully futuristic idea. But until that becomes reality and wireless charging ubiquitous, it's just not something that's a deal breaker for me. As I mentioned at the start of this review, this is a really fantastic phone. It has a battery that'll last all day, a screen that's second only to one, and software features that really only have time to get better. If you're an Android fan looking to have a flagship device at a less than budget price, or just looking to have the latest and greatest and most powerful in your hands, then pick up the Nexus 6P. So that's it for today's review of the Nexus 6P. Be sure to hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video and subscribe to the channel to see more content just like this. I'll see you guys next time here on Just Tech.